What's up, Prize Five fans? I'm Brian Tong, and we have a battle between the best of the best with two CNET Editor's Choice streaming media boxes. It's a Prize Five punch out between the Roku 3 and the Apple TV third generation. Our judges for this fight are executive editor John Stone Cole Falcone, senior associate editor Matthew The Big Show Muscoviak, and myself, Ring a Ling a Ding Tong. We'll take each round score and average them out to the nearest tenth of a point. The final prize fight score will be an average of all rounds using the same system. Let's get this party started. Round one is designed. The Roku 3 brings a new and improved design with its black glossy finish and thicker curves that I approve of. Their classic fabric tag is there and a heavier weight that makes it feel more solid. Now the third generation Apple TV is still the little matte black box that holds up better against dust or fingerprints with rounded corners and a heavier weight. Neither of these guys get in the way, but the judges prefer the Apple TV 4.7 to 4. Next round is user interface and navigation. The Roku 3 completely revamped its main interface and it's great to navigate while allowing you to see more channels and content. One slight drawback is the inside of a Roku channel still retains the old horizontal look and feel. Now customization is king here and you can personalize the entire layout of your channels and let's not forget its killer search functionality that pulls from Roku's multiple content sources. Roku seriously stepped up their game. Now the Apple TV's interface is an elegant experience, but it could be simplified and needs a facelift. Animations are smooth and its interface feels polished, but there's no real customization here and no search across its different services. The Roku 3 gets a 4.7 and Apple TV gets a 4. So after averaging two rounds, we're tied. Round three is features. The Roku 3 makes a point of not being a stripped down box anymore with a snappier processor that you can feel bringing HDMI 1080p video support with 802.11n dual band Wi-Fi and an Ethernet connection. You'll have a micro SD card slot for additional storage and a USB port to connect external drives and it even supports MKV files. But that's not all. The killer feature is its enhanced remote with an audio jack for private listening that lets you listen to what's playing through your headphones so you won't disturb anyone else. And it even comes with purple earbuds. The remote also acts as a motion controller for games like Angry Birds, and it may not have AirPlay, but the Roku app for Android and iOS lets you stream your photos or music to the box. Now the Apple TV also brings HDMI with 1080p support, 802.11n Wi-Fi and Ethernet with an option for optical audio out. The USB port is primarily used for service, so you can't connect just any type of drive to it. Its feature setup really opens up though if you live in the Apple ecosystem. AirPlay support allows you to play and display content directly from your iOS devices, and AirPlay mirroring allows your Apple laptop or computer screen to be mirrored onto your TV with just one click if it's supported. Now that's all pretty sweet if you're an Apple user. Now if you pay $24.99 a year for the iTunes Match service, you can access your entire music collection and if you use the iCloud, you'll also be able to view your photo stream, again, if you love them apples. Now the Apple TV is feature packed if you're part of the ecosystem, but the Roku 3 just dominates with useful features that work for everyone. The Roku 3 gets a perfect 5 and Apple TV gets a 4. Next round is content. I can only tell you that content is king so many times and it still holds true here. Both streaming boxes have access to Netflix and Hulu Plus, but Roku shines with over 100 channels of content like Amazon Video On Demand, which has now become a must have, and HBO Go, which covers your movies and TV shows. Now there's on demand sports for the NBA, MLB, and NHL, and specific content like our own CNET channel. Hey, that's one of my favorites or stuff for the kids with the Disney Channel. Now there's Spotify and Pandora for music discovery, and social services like Facebook and Flickr have apps as well. The only drawback is there's still no YouTube, but Roku's channels are endless. On the other side, Apple's box has access to content from iTunes to purchase TV shows, music, and movies, and they have support for on-demand sports as well. But when you're talking about Apple TV's additional online services, it's a handful like YouTube, Flickr and Vimeo, and yeah, it's pretty slim pickings. 
Now the catch is that you can actually play more content through AirPlay mirroring from your computer if you have the right Apple hardware. The Roku swings hard again with the Perfect 5 and the Apple TV gets a 4. So after averaging 4 rounds, Roku leads by half a point. The final round that decides it all is value. Both of these streaming boxes are $99, and there's no denying that Roku 3 has packed as much value as you can in a box this small. Now, the Apple TV is worth it if you're an Apple lover, but it's hard to say it's really an overall better value than the Roku 3 at this point in the game. In the final round, Roku gets a 4.3, and Apple gets a 4. So let's average out all five rounds, and the Roku 3 finally gets its revenge from its last battle with the Apple TV, and reclaims its title, taking this fight 4.6 to 4.1, and is your prize fight winner. You can't go wrong with two CNET Editor's Choice streaming boxes, and the Roku 3 made sure to bring its A game to the ring. The next move is yours, Apple. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another prize fight. Bye bye!